Oh. I'm still working on it. (laughs) (laughs) So charming. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode nine of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Episode nine, we made it to nine. Nine is... So nine. Huh? There's no significance to uh, the number nine. Oh, yeah. Unless, huh. unless you're super high and you're John Lennon, then there is like four minutes of significance. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. Was that the name of that song or was it called something else? I believe it was called Number Nine. Yeah. Re- Revolution Number Nine? Maybe it was called Revolution. Yeah, you're right. Revolution Number Nine. And it's okay. on the White Album. Of course. Now, here's the funny part, too. You're like, we got to put out a double album this time. Why? Because <laughs> you had to record that one? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't fit anywhere else. Yeah, they had a lot of good songs. And then that one has Revolution Number 9 and also Why Don't We Do It in the Road. Two right. classics. <laughs> two. <laughs> it really, they often sounded like six different bands. Yeah. For sure. And, that. And, I mean, nobody else was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we talked once about how I've come around to Mother by uh, the police. Right. Um, there's no part of my life where I'll go, no, let's do it in the road is a pretty good song. There's never <laughs> going to come a time when I say that. There'll be times when I go, eh, it's kind of funny that they did that. But that's the most. It's not yeah. a good song. I think they were definitely out of place where they're like, let's see what we can get away with. Yeah. Yeah. That, the that Beatles was, now. Yeah. That was a precursor to Let It Be, which is all half songs. That entire album is a lot of, I'd have been neat if they'd have finished that. <laughs> you know, so then you have to have what's his name uh, come in and overproduce it just to make it an album and then go to prison years later. I can't remember his name. <laughs> what is it about record producing? Yeah, the big hair okay. guy. What's his name? Do you remember? As, was that Epstein? I don't know my Beatles stuff very well. No, he, oh, he, the hair guy. Who was he? Shot the guy in the face. Right. And uh, and then now the weird. So it's <laughs> weird that he shot a guy in the face. But here's the weirdest part. For a while, that hair was a wig. Oh. So I didn't know that. At one point, it was real hair. Then it turned out he'd been wearing a wig. And I'm like, none of us were in love with the hair. You didn't have to wear the wig. Yeah, if you're, and also if you're getting a wig, you can get any hair you want. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Why, why did you go with that? And because it's not like anybody's buying an album because they're like, oh, that's a big hair guy. Yeah, the I heard the producer has cool hair. <laughs> Yeah, no, you want a good receding hairline on your record producer, I think. Yeah, exactly. Or a backwards Kangol hat or something. Or he, or he don't shoot nobody. Or, you know, probably most people don't even think about that. Yeah, exactly. But also, you love it if you don't shoot nobody is what I think. Yeah, ideally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ideally. Face. You know, chances are you're going to shoot somebody. But ideally, it'd be great if you didn't. Ideally. In a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> So I picked uh, a song this week that uh, is uh, it. It's I think uh, most of the time it'd be the song I say is my favorite Billy Joel song, and then uh, it's way up there for you too, right? It's way up there for me. It's um, yeah, it really is like his doctorate <laughs> in, in Billy Joelness. Yeah, it is all of his moves. Um, all of his themes. Um, yeah, if it's like, hey, um, I want to be a Billy Joel fan, but I don't have time to listen to more than one song. You go, oh, listen to this one, because you'll get most of it. Yeah, you'll get, you'll get most of the Billy Joel experience. And it's, uh, it's a fun song, and we were talking about it before we started recording, that when you look at it, there's just about nothing wrong with it. It's, yeah. in my opinion, like lyrically, musically, uh he even it even seems to me as we get into it we'll talk about this but it seems to me it's like super self-aware like he's not misunderstanding 
who he is at all in this song to where you go, oh man, you don't know you're talking about yourself. Right. Or whatever. It's not one of those deals. Uh, the, the rhyme scheme, great. Very charming. Is it, is it extra complicated lyrically? I don't think so, but I think it's everything makes sense. Nothing feels redundant. I just like nope. the whole damn song. And it's weird to not be redundant and have it be if maybe not his longest song, but it's pr it's probably up there. It's a long I think song. it is his longest song. It might be, yeah. It's not a radio friendly three and a half minute song. It's that's not what this is for. Nope. This is uh an album cut. Yeah. It probably should never have been a hit. Was it? I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was like a radio hit, but it's certainly everybody knows this one. You know, yeah. if you know three Billy Joel songs, this is one of them. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, even if it wasn't right, even if you didn't buy it as a single, it may be one of the things you like most about the album. And and it's so listenable. Just I, it's so just putting it on and re-listening and re-listening and re-listening. It's enjoyable every damn time. Yes. And it moves uh, at the right speed. Yeah. It, it changes gears at all the right times. Yeah. Just when you're like, I'm tired of hearing about the bottles of various colored wines. <laughs> you're like, okay, the, here's, a, here's some, uh, some like uh, a reminiscing yeah. about the good old days. And yeah. like, okay, well, I'm a little tired of that. All right, well, here's a bummer of a story. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, no one seems too bummed out about in the actual song. Yeah, it's a, uh, I, I, I guess because, yeah, you're right, they're not. And I guess when we get into it, we'll talk more about it. But uh, I guess because he's telling us a story of something that was probably a bummer at the time. Yeah. But they've gotten through it and they're like, and then, you know, this is just kind of what happened. Before we do anything else, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do, do, does anybody else call it whites when they're talking about wine? Always wondered that. I've never heard anybody. I looked it up because I was curious. It was like, what do you mean? What else would you call it? White. A bottle of white. Yeah. Bottle of red, bottle of white. But at one point he calls them whites. I think it's a, a vocal thing with him. Okay. I don't think it's, yeah. I think it's like a lazy lip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bottle yeah. of white. Yeah, it's yeah, it's that lazy. It's not quite a lisp, but it's uh, vocal laziness. Okay. Or it's to be tired at that point. It's seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because I felt like, do we mean that like we're tying one on, and this is so many bottles of white wine? Because that's the only thing I could think was that, yeah, you're just getting <laughs> crashed on white wine. Which have you, ever been, have you ever been drunk? Part of this song. Yes. It's one of the worst drunks ever. I agree. It's a full headache. You get the headache before you even get drunk, I feel yeah. like. It's the chattiest of all the drunks for me, too. Oh, no, not for me. It's just headache and uh, the driest mouth you've ever had. Yeah. The worst. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear me tell you I love you too much, wine drunk. I'm that guy for sure. <laughs> Just trying to imagine what too much could ever be. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That was nice, right? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's dig into this very uh, meaty song. Uh, and uh, I'll start. Uh, start. So the, the song starts out real slow, which is nice. Uh, just a little bit of piano as we lead, lead into the song. We got a bottle of white bottle of red perhaps a bottle of rosé instead and i just a little side note never rosé but never okay, rose. maybe you guys like it no 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 none for me yeah i'm not a big fan of the rosé although i had a pinot noir rosé once that was worth it but rarely <laughs> is it worth it i have no use for it uh yeah same here it just seems like you took wine and then you were like let's take out the part that tastes good uh <laughs> we'll get a table near the street in our old familiar place, you and I face to face. 
Yeah. So, so charming. It's a um, right away you get the impression uh, that we're talking about a person that you haven't seen for a while, maybe, and a, a person that you have deep affection for, and that you're trying to make, you're trying to reconnect. And I think it comes across so quickly. It's nice that we just establish, right, like right away, I know what we're talking about. I'm not confused about what his point is. It's just yeah. a very nice. Yeah, it's very few words to set up a place and a time and a feeling. Yeah. Uh, very economically. It's weird to talk about how economical this song is considering how fucking long it is. Right. It's true, lyrically, it's very tight. Yeah. Um, and all right, I'm gonna tell you my thesis that I just came up with. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I think uh, the Italian restaurant is standing in for New York uh, in my little metaphor. Okay. Scenes from New York and life and growing up in New York. Yeah. And that's why this part I think is, here's my impression of a Frank Sinatra song. Yeah. Um, this is when I was a little kid in Hicksville. I heard a lot of Frank Sinatra and it sounded like this to me. <laughs> it sounded <laughs> like red wine, white wine, restaurants, you and me. Yeah. Um, this is one of my earliest memories is hearing somebody sing something that sounded like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a, a tri tribute or or just a, more like a reminiscence of like, this, this was my pop, this was my ma, well, maybe not as pop, yeah. but, but mom, and this was the neighborhood older dudes, not my friends, but older fellas and the music they listen to. Oh, I can see that a lot. Yeah, when I was, you know, a little kid in 1952 or whatever, yeah. this is uh, what all the music sounded like. Yeah. And it's it's gentle, and it's uh, and it's it's funny to me to take to talk about something like this, that really is just about I having a nice dinner. I like that. <laughs> just <laughs> it's just kind of nice to have that. I like seeing things in songs that you don't often see expressed the way that they are. Um, I like seeing stuff where it's about going to a restaurant with somebody <laughs> yeah as opposed to so many songs that are about giant things you know a lot of songs are just yeah. about giant things they're about giant losses or giant victories or, right. or very passionate love yeah very bad heartbreak it's but, like oh let's get a bottle of wine <laughs> yeah this isn't even about a great restaurant. It's about a good restaurant. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just a nice little hole in the wall where you got, maybe you got some spaghetti and meatballs and it was $9. And you're like, that's one of the reasons I like this place is you can get a dinner for nine bucks. And then we spent, what, what, what did I spend on the wine? 15 bucks, right? That was nice. Yeah, yeah and that guy, the guy oh. later was fine. Do you have in uh, where you live now uh, an old familiar place, like one of these joints where um, you can always go to dinner? It's like a fallback. Pre Nobody can think of anything. You guys are like, oh, let's go here. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the, one of the places we like to go is a nice Italian restaurant that uh, used to be a fire department uh, firehouse. It's like a really old um, uh it's a really old Italian restaurant that's in what used to be a firehouse. And the firehouse at one point was the set for a Three Stooges movie. Oh, great. Yeah. So it's really cool. Everything's brick. And when you think about LA, you don't think about um, object permanence. <laughs> <laughs> right. So to yeah. have a place like that is nice because we had all kinds of places like that in Chicago. Yes. You just could go to, oh, here's the bar where I became an alcoholic. Here's the restaurant where I did my 12 steps. And, you know, you have all that yep. stuff. And they're all still there. Yep. And, uh, and it, yeah, in LA, you don't have that, but you do if you look for it. Yeah. You just need one. Yeah. So even LA can give you that. 
Yeah, and some of them are uh, grotesque, like Jumbo's Clown Room is hilarious. <laughs> Jumbo's Clown Room? I've never been. You've heard of it, though, right? Oh, I'm very familiar with it, yeah. yeah. I, everyone I know has a story about getting thrown out of there at some point. Yeah, I have but a story. Yeah, I have, my story is the shortest story. I went there. It was fine. I didn't care for it. It's fine. But it's cool that it exists. <laughs> It's like, admittedly <laughs> yeah. not a great story, but it's at least a short story. It's good that they never went with a better name. Yeah, absolutely. And it, of course, it's Tim Bennett. Uh, Sorry, is, I'm filling in Sue on the details. Oh, no worries. <laughs> it is, of course, great that it, Tim Bennett, of course, loved it. Of course. Because he's inclined to love nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> this is why one of the many reasons I love that kid but my god it's just like back in the old days when he was like hey do you want to go to this place and get uh buffalo wings and you're like Ugh, all right <laughs> fine well, I have to um, leave my house to do that <laughs> so we of course have a an old familiar Italian restaurant around the corner here sure. Chelsea Ristorante and it is exactly the place there is, there are tables near the street. I mean, before the pandemic, they still had tables near the street. Yeah. Um, and you get your bottle of red or white. Red, you get red. You get red. Um, but don't you think that like the old familiar place and this whole vibe can only really be Italian? Yeah. I don't think anyone has an old familiar Cuban Japanese fusion restaurant. <laughs> I have a Thai restaurant that I go to so often and they know me and they seem to like me and they don't seem to like a lot of people, which I like that in a re in people in general. Yeah. You know, like I like knowing that somebody's like, oh, they like me. They may might not like you. I like, I appreciate that because it feels <laughs> meaningful as opposed to just the guy who loves everybody. Yeah, or, you know, like the difference between cats and dogs is that your cat, if your cat likes you, that's amazing. Your cat probably don't like very many other people. I used to go to uh, the Smog Cutter. Have you been there in LA? I have not. A very dive bar on the east side. Uh, and it was run by uh, these Thai ladies who were mean to everyone, in including and especially the people that they liked. And I remember one time I didn't go there for a few months. I was trying to dry out a little bit. And, but I went back and uh, this woman who was the bartender, whose name was Sunshine, <laughs> uh, punched me in the stomach. <laughs> when I came, she punched me in the stomach, like harder than you should if you're being funny. And she said, where have you been? <laughs> I'm not going to do the voice. <laughs> she said, where have you been? And then I told her, I was like, I'm trying not to drink as much. And, and then she uh, yelled at me for not drinking enough. And then uh, we had a great time. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. But they were so mean all the time. It was great. I, uh, so yeah, okay. I guess you're right. It doesn't have to be Italian. But I, but <laughs> when you, your first thought, I think is always going to be an Italian restaurant because it feels, well, first of all, American movies, and uh pop culture in general like what you're picturing is italian and then if you've ever been to somebody's house who has an italian mother and they cooked for you you got way overfed and yeah. you and you felt really welcome even if you weren't you just felt really welcome my friend uh gilmore rizzo uh italian if you didn't know uh <laughs> he is his mom super italian and he could not be more opinionated about uh, Italian food. He's mad if it's not good, and it's great. It's a personality okay. thing. He's, he ain't putting up with it. He ain't tolerating, <laughs> you know, if you wanted to take him to, like, what's that chain restaurant uh, with the stick, breadsticks? Oh, uh, sure, Olive Garden. Oh, he'd be so mad, and it'd be <laughs> worth it. <He'd> be so <laughs> they have uh, encouraged a lot of rage among Italians. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I like what I little one liner I used to say is I said you know I think one of the it's a lot of racism in uh, in America probably the most racist is uh, calling Olive Garden or Chef Boyardee Italian food because <laughs> <laughs> I get why that'd make you mad 
if you care about and also i agree because i like italian food so i always thought uh their slogan when you're here your family they created that to keep italians out it's like oh no <laughs> we don't want to be family <laughs> like oh my family's here no fuck it <laughs> going in there it's like a, a waspy idea of italian yeah it's, um, I think wasps like the idea of family because they can't talk to each other. Oh yeah, true. true. And like, oh, I wish we like were like Italians. I'm like, no, you really, you super don't. Yeah. You don't want that. Except the blessing of silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Be thankful for what you got. And also, uh, pasta shouldn't have as much sugar in it. Just so you know. <laughs> uh, um, all all right. Let me do the second part of the first, our first uh, scene, and then you jump into the next scene when we finish it up. Okay. Uh, so we're still, and by the way, it makes sense that we unfold this slow because we're just hanging out having a bottle of red and a bottle of white. Yeah. Uh, our second verse is bottle of red, bottle of white. It all depends upon your appetite. I'll meet you anytime you want in our Italian restaurant. How great, just, and we're, <laughs> right. esta we're establishing this is low stakes. The only stakes are you and I are gonna just reconnect. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that sentiment and he does it with two verses and that's it. Yeah, and then here we go uh, reconnecting, I guess. We've ordered. Yeah. And now uh, things are okay with me these days. Can I Got pick it. her up real quick? Uh, yeah, go. But just to read, just to, for people who haven't heard the song, also musically now it changes. Musically yeah, we're picking up the pace. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, things are okay with me these days. Got a good job. Got a good office. Got a new wife. Got a new life. And the family is fine. <laughs> we lost touch long ago. You lost weight. I did not know that you could ever look so nice after so much time. Then now it gets a little dicey. He is divorced and remarried, yeah. but I think he's at this restaurant with another lady who lost weight. Oh, a girl that maybe he knew in high school who was like, hello. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also think, it. I find it funny when people refer to a new wife or or a new husband it could be either one i always find it funny when people go oh i got a new wife because it <laughs> feels like you're saying it the same way that you would say stereo or <laughs> blender yeah it's i went and went out and got a new wife it feels so dismissive and it it feels and i guess it makes sense that if you got married a bunch of times like mr joel has that at some point you're like yeah i got married it, it ain't a big deal you know it it, it certainly doesn't yes. feel permanent or precious or whatever <laughs> um yeah it's a weird verse because first it's like oh things are okay with me and then there's a lot of information yeah. these people haven't spoken in a long time yeah i got a good job which you didn't know about apparently right Got a good office. Got a new wife. I got a new life. And the family is fine. <laughs> the family you remember. Yeah. They're fine. We uh, lost touch long ago. Yeah. They dated. It's very, trying, uh, it's also decide. very, it's very cheeky the way he sings the song too. He sings this part with a sense of humor. Yeah, he does one of his little voices. Yeah. And it feels... I did it, not know. Yeah. You're going to have a look so good after so much time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like when you do, a, when you've been giving a lady a compliment and you do a wacky voice so you don't feel so uh, vulnerable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, your uh, boobies look great. <laughs> there, I don't feel silly now. Yeah, what a great compliment, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes to hear that their boobies are nice. Yeah, that's which has not at all been my experience. 
Yeah, you lead with that. You lead with that. That's a good one. Lead with that. Well, we can. We already talked about the family and the new wife. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to the business. <laughs> yeah, I like. Uh, and again, talk about economy. When you there's just a ton of information right here. Yeah. There's, information there's, and action. Yeah. And um. You, and now, and now we're into reminiscing. Did not know you could look so nice after so much time, which leads him to the next thought. Do you remember those days hanging out in the at the Village Green? Which I don't know what that is. I don't either, and I did not bother to look it up because I'm okay. Who with knows? It. It's at the center of an, like an eastern town. Oh, it's okay. We met at church or So it's just like a town center. Oh. Village yeah. Green. So like probably. Every little town on Long Island yeah. has a village green. Yes. Okay. So like a little park in the center of town that has like a cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a statue of some kid who died in like World War One. Okay. Yeah. You know uh, engineer boots, leather jackets, and tight blue jeans. A timeless look. Yeah. Although you could place it right into the fifties. It absolutely feels like a classic Billy Joel remembers the 50s fondly and remembers yes. the birth of rock and roll the way that um, I, I hold a I I hold a romanticized vision of the fifth the birth of rock and roll but not like that because I'm a little past imagining myself there yeah but he was of the age that he just missed it he just missed being the right age to really get into it. Right. And it, probably was around a lot of older dudes. Yeah. I, I have that sort of a feeling about certain 70s things. So it makes perfect sense. There's stuff from the 70s that I think, oh, this stuff was cool, which it probably really wasn't. But it's just that my sisters and my brother were, you know, out getting into trouble. And I was just still in, a kid. Yeah. I have a lot of memories of uh the late 70s being a teenager in the late 70s though i wasn't i was like 11 but all my friends were 11 and they all had older siblings who were doing all the late 70s teenage things yeah just ahead of us you know what i mean yeah they had like the long flat hair and weird silk shirts i have a big albums yeah. <laughs> you know oh, yeah hell yeah I remember vividly there was this girl who lived down the street who was a little older than me. Well, probably very older than me compared. So she was probably like 16 and I was like 10 or 11. And then I became hyper aware that she sometimes did things with boys. And then I became hyper aware that I was like, I wish I was a little older. So she, I could be a boy she did things with. <laughs> yeah oh for sure obsessed with that because she was very cute but she was dirty and smoked and did all kinds of things <laughs> yeah like, that, that was like the, right when uh, teenagers were first becoming super gross yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah leather jackets tight blue jeans drop a dime in the box all right that'll probably place us somewhere in time yeah Drop a dime in the box, play a song about New Orleans. Great. Yeah, yeah. Very economical and evocative without being super specific. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't think he's referring to any specific song. I, I don't either. Um, he could easily be re referring to just Fats Domino in general. Um, <laughs> right, right. And, uh, and wouldn't that just be absolutely who he should be talking about? Just so much um that's domino just such a a guy who who is a perfect guy for you to like and and learn stuff about better music and rock and roll because he made both yeah he made his money and then he made his art so you know just that's how you do it pretty kick ass one for me one for you yeah <laughs> um i do i like how it's such a great specific but not too specific way to recall that era like there were a lot of songs about new orleans for a while 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that's probably what it was. Um, but not a specific song, not yeah. too general. Just like, yeah, that, it's great. It's nicely done. Yeah. And you get it without getting it. Yeah. You know, it's funny you should say that because I often think about certain movies end up accidentally being timeless, partly because of the things that they don't do. So the example I always use is Wizard of Oz originally had this song called The Jitterbug. In the original version of Wizard of Oz, there's a song called The Jitterbug. And in the context of the movie, The Jitterbug makes them all dance and get tired and fall asleep. And that's what it, the witch okay. puts it out. But I've often thought that if that song had stayed in, it feels like the movie wouldn't be timeless because you would have specifically referenced The Jitterbug a dance of the era ah and uh and it was very much the dance they were doing was the jitterbug they weren't like doing a different dance they were really doing the, <laughs> the era's version of the hip dance right so when you talk put put a dime in the box and play a song about new orleans so much better than telling us what song because yeah. now it's just romanticized and it's not what song is he talking about? Because he tells a song that you never knew because you're not as old as he is. And the eternal danger of mentioning a song in another song is that you're like, oh, that song's better. <laughs> 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 I like that song. Yeah, I'll go listen to that. Yeah, I mean, not bother with this horse shit. I'm going to go listen to <laughs> Yeah, why am I listening to this? I'm going to go um, listen to the New um, Orleans song, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the thing that uh, happens in country music a lot, they'll mention other artists. Because there's a real, like, worshipful mythology about certain country artists. Yes. Get mentioned a lot in country songs. Yeah. And you're like, oh, why am I listening to this Jamoke? When I, he's right, Johnny Cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Waylon and Willie. Yeah, I'll, I'll go listen to that. Uh, you guy, make a good point, sir. I'm turning you off. copying him badly. <laughs> I'll go listen to the real guy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the tip. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, Billy Joel does do this sometimes, but it's but not in this song. But it, it's also my off, often my feeling is anytime somebody mention mentions a little too overtly rock and roll as an idea. Oh, yeah. It's almost always sometimes it's like in a song where you're like, it makes you go. Yeah, but this song isn't rock and roll. This song is just kind <laughs> of pop garbage. Right. You're, uh, don't, yeah. Soft rock. Yeah. Don't don't talk to me about rock and roll, you soft rocker. But now as a side note, by the way, nobody who ever writes songs that mention jukeboxes seem to be aware that the price has gone up. They never are aware of that. It's true. Um it's like uh movies where payphones are always a dime. Right. <laughs> no, but I think in this case we're we are living in an era where it is a dime. Yeah, agreed. This is a, a, a cost appropriate for the era. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, let me just finish up that verse because we stopped at New Orleans. Cool. Which is, yeah, I do like that he says New Orleans and rather than New Orleans. I agree. One is a feeling and one is a place. Yeah. Cold beer, hot lights. My sweet romantic teenage nights. Yeah. Very, again, more economy. Yeah. Cold beer, hot lights, sweet and romantic. Yeah. You don't need all the details. Yeah. It, the details would, the details would ruin it or, well, first it would make it overlong. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. I think he may have forced himself into writing better by cramming three songs together. Yeah. Like, oh, this is a trillion words long. Let me just cut some stuff. He probably made some good cuts. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, or at least it feels like he did. It's like, oh, I don't have to say cold beer, hot lights, pretty girls, uh, <laughs> cars, right. drive-in movie theater. Jackets. Oh, I've like jacket before. I don't need to say jacket again. <laughs> <laughs> Covered on jackets. Right. Um, but a good general, you know, eight lines is a very good general sense of like, 
was what I felt like when I was a teenager. Yeah. Not so much exactly what happened. Yeah. But like, this is what I remember is like a blur of engineer boots, leather jackets. Yeah. <laughs> New Orleans. I you drank, get it. I you don't need more details. Lot. Yeah. I drank a lot. Cold beer. Just, you get it. He just drank more than he should. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure Billy Joel ever, you know, drank a lot or not. Not kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. What if, if he's saying it's a lot, then it was definitely a lot. Right. If he's saying a lot. There was probably an emergency room visit he's leaving out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, now, <laughs> then uh, we go into a lot of piano, right? Yeah. And now it, it, so we did our little slow in the beginning, then it starts to pick up pace. And now it changes musically pretty drastically, I think. And it goes fast, which is really yeah. fun. The piano just starts to go nuts. And it's, even that feels economical. Like um, uh, Angry Young Man, we talked about before, has <laughs> right. the, the big beginning and it's lovely and brilliant. This is similar in that he's he's letting you know, by the way, I can play the hell out of this piano. Right. It still feels economical. It's like, here we go. And he right. doesn't do it for four minutes or whatever. <laughs> right. So it's like we're turning the page musically. Yeah. And, and are, I think also reminiscing at the same time because it does sound a lot like what you'd get from Jerry Lee Lewis. Yes. I was going to say the same thing. You're or he was super into as a kid. Yeah. A kid taking piano lessons. Yeah, it is he just starts to tear it up here and it feels it feels really organic. You're absolutely right because he's now we're now we're really getting into the meat and bones of a memory. So before yeah. it was a general feeling, now this is not general. This is specific. <laughs> this is a story, a beginning middle end story. Yeah. So, from that era so i'll do the first part uh and uh oh and i gotta say my friend walker who is from uh long island right uh, is your uh, billy joel fan friend yeah if i brought this song i brought this song up to him one time and, and i go you know that song and he just proceeded to almost aggressively sing the entire song at me yeah that's <laughs> uh if you uh when you drive from Long Island to Manhattan, if you don't have toll, the, if you can sing the whole song and they'll let you in. <laughs> <laughs> but if you fuck up any words, you have to go back to Long Island. Yeah, and then even if you have the money, you're not allowed in because they're like, uh-uh. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Money's no good here. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I like the names to begin, to begin with. The names seem like just the perfect names. It's Brenda and Eddie were the popular steadies. Brenda and Eddie. Just he pronounced you know, Brenda. Brenda and Eddie, yep. By the way, uh, there's another in another song um in Don't Ask Me Why, just a side note, he says, Don't ask me why. That was always funny. No, he does not. Yes, he does. <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to do that. There's a point at which I swear to God he goes, Don't ask me why. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh Brenda and Eddie were the popular steadies and the king and the queen of the prom. Again, I know exactly who they are. Yeah, every school had them. Riding around with the car top down and the radio on. All right, these guys, probably he's a jock. Probably yeah. she is a cheerleader. And they like to be seen. They like the attention. I bet you he's the jock who wasn't a dick to the nerds. He was the guy who just kind of <laughs> liked everybody. He was the guy who played both sides of the fence. He didn't yeah. get it. You're like, he's, people thought of him as tough. And then when you thought about high school, you're like, I don't think he was ever in a fight. I think he just kind of was nice. Yeah, he had status that he earned. And he had this bravado, riding around with the car top down and the radio on. Nobody looked any finer or was more of a hit at the Parkway Diner love it love it like this is where we <laughs> hung out you saw these yeah. two guys come in and you felt like somebody had arrived in your dumb little world your beautiful naive little silly world 
I think about yeah. my own high school days when I was so funny and people was that ah, Jim's so funny and <laughs> and I earned it by being a troublemaker in class or whatever. Yep. But it seemed more important then, of course. Yes. Beautiful yes. though. You were uh, the funniest dude in the world. Yep. And, and this guy was the best athlete and she was the prettiest girl. And of course, they're going to do incredible things in life. They're not going to end up doing dumb things. Uh, no. I also like uh, Parkway Diner as a nice detail. Yep, me too. Me because too. That puts you right here in the tri-state area. Yep. We never knew we could want more than that out of life. Ah, great. Because there's also <laughs> like, you don't have to pay bills and you don't, you don't really know bills exist. I mean, you know, dad pays bills, but it hasn't right. occurred to you that you're going to be paying them soon. No. Surely Brenda and Eddie would always know how to survive. Boom. <laughs> we know who they are. And it's, yeah. and it's still economical. That's a hell of a lot of words. And it, no, you know what it feels like to see them. Yeah. And to, oh, what they feel like. Yeah. And we all, everybody had this. Everybody had this couple. I remember like uh, being a super outsider in high school. So being very like observing all the time. I feel like my high school went through three of these couples. <laughs> like when I was a freshman, there were cool seniors and they were Brenda and Eddie. And then they were gone the next year, but somebody else was there and they looked kind of the same. <laughs> um, they dressed kind of the same, except yeah. that this one, she, the girl had dark hair. <laughs> and then the next year was somebody else entirely but you always have them yeah there's no openings so my high school because i was in arizona there was this kid named tito and tito was an athlete and he was never in drama or anything like that but i remember i did something in class and uh he thought it was so funny and um he would call me, um, he would call me Lenny Bruce. <laughs> and even in high school, I knew that I had not earned that, but I was cool with it because I knew that I no Lenny Bruce. Oh God. But <laughs> even then, but he would, I did something one time where I told off a teacher and I got suspended. And then what I found out later is the first day of my suspension, he stood up in class and he goes, I would like to uh, take a moment of silence for Mr. Lenny Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher went, Tito. <laughs> he was that guy, and I don't know who the girl was, but I I couldn't say that for sure who her name was, but I'm sure she dated Tito. <laughs> he was just a charming man who just did who got along with everybody. There wasn't anybody he was uh and again, I know he could have beat people up, but then I think back on it, and I'm like, yeah, but he never did because he didn't need to and he wasn't a jerk. Yeah, and I we, think had, uh, we had a guy named Larry LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> it was like homecoming king. And it was LaRue, the French spelling with lots of extra. <laughs> and he, yeah, never suspended, never in trouble on the football team, on all the teams, like curly blonde hair. He was the whole deal <laughs> in the world. And you liked him and you're like, what? Liked him and like never spoke to him because I was scared of him. But it wasn't like he was going to beat me up. It was just like, oh no, you're famous. Like those people in high school are famous. Yeah. That's the first fame you encounter in real life, I think. And I do remember like, that. Those teachers are like nervous around him. Yeah. <laughs> you That's know, those kids. Is. Yep. I remember there was a girl in our school, and I don't know her name because I could have never talked to her in a million years, who seemed ridiculously good looking to be going to our dumb school. Mm -hmm. and of course, just her genetics. She's walking around looking like fucking Aphrodite. And all, all, all the rest of us have got like fucking pock marks on our face. And we're like, oh, yeah. What is she doing here? <laughs> why is. <laughs> why, why yeah. Is, yeah, she don't. I'm not going to talk to her. Why would I talk to her? That's. That's yeah, no. Loud. Yeah, I'll tear the time space continuum in half. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, and yeah, I remember as a young adult having a job one time. There was this regular person who would come in to shop at this dumb job I had, and she was too pretty. 
And she would always talk to me and I'd go, okay, you can do this, Jim. You can look <laughs> at this person. And it wasn't like, it wasn't even a sex thing. It was like, I looked at her and I was like, it's like looking at a painting. Yeah, different species. Yeah, I'm not, I, I definitely can't touch it. This is a painting. This is a art. You're a, you're a, you're a testament to how good the species could be. <laughs> oh, now that see that sounded like Lenny Bruce to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, poetry and comedy woven together. <laughs> oh, that, you're very nice. Oh. All right, it's your turn now, my friend. All right, this is where I hit a brick wall in a lot of ways. Uh, so we just got on all, Brenda, the foreshadowing. Brenda and Eddie would always know how to survive. Right. Uh, Brenda and Eddie were still going steady in the summer of 75? Yeah, the timing of this is a little weird. It's 75 now? <laughs> uh, this album came out in 77. Oh, yeah. But it's, this is uh, Billy Joel being Billy Joel again, where he's like, I want to say summer of 57, but it doesn't flow. Uh, fuck it. I'll make it 75. <laughs> Nobody cares. The piano sounds good. Yeah. So I'm like, you are reminiscing about a high school couple from two years ago? <laughs> yeah. Unless they've been going steady a long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean... And then if they're going steady, at some point you're like, you guys got to quit saying you're going steady. That sounds dumb now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, okay, so gloss over that and pretend he meant 57 or 58. Sure. Still going steady in the summer of hmm, whatever. When they decided the marriage would be at the end of July, everyone said they were crazy. That's weird. Yeah. Everyone thought they were the perfect star couple a minute ago. Now yeah. everyone says they're crazy. I guess they're still in high school. That's yeah. why it's crazy. Yeah, and it could also be the adults in their lives now. Yeah. Because now you're dealing with, so before you're dealing with how we all feel about Brenda and Eddie as peers. And right. it could be parents going, look, you're good at football, but you, <laughs> your grades really aren't that great. And right. what, what is she going to, really? And if she's your sure. high school sweetheart, maybe you want to think about it because folks will often tell you, and they're not wrong to point this out. They're like, you know, it's your first girlfriend. That might not be your wife. Maybe it is, but it might not be. <laughs> yeah. Not, not a bad piece of advice. Yeah. But yeah, they are dragging in other people by announcing a marriage. Yeah. Uh, everyone said they were crazy. Brenda, you know that you're much too lazy. <laughs> and Eddie, Eddie could never afford to live that kind of life. Yeah. Married life? It's uh, it's definitely economical in the sense that I'm not sure what kind of life. <laughs> I think this is like, Eddie, you're a great high school quarterback. Yeah. But you're 5'9", and colleges don't want you. Right. What are you going to do for a living? Your grades aren't great, probably, but with all the driving around instead of studying. Right. You like, you've fun. got it made right now. Yeah. Just don't fuck it up. Yeah. You don't need to be married. You need to go to a trade school. And they must have felt like very betrayed by everyone. <laughs> like, you are the perfect star couple. We all love you. Okay, great. We're getting married. What? What? You idiots. You are lazy and you will never make money. Yeah. What? But <laughs> you just said, I just got crowned. Homecoming king. <laughs> it's a real... I mean, it's reality coming their way. Yeah. But there we were, waving Brenda and Eddie goodbye, which is not an expression. Yeah. Oh, Jim's leaving. Let me wave him goodbye. <laughs> is it this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I get the impression they're in the just married car that they can't afford. Yeah. Uh, with all the crap on the back of it and everybody's going, oh, this ain't going to work out. Yeah. A lot of this from the... Oh, no, you got it. Oof, boy. <laughs> Bill be back. Yeah, oh, boy. I, uh, what did you get? Money. That's all. They just need money. <laughs> That's what they need. Yeah, I mean, 
she she's not gonna get a job you know how lazy she is notoriously lazy she is <laughs> um this next one i really like um this is billy joel again where it's like we've all been having fun and reminiscing and being in a good mood with our uh wine and whatnot they got an apartment with deep pile carpet and a couple of paintings from Sears. Yes, I like that. Grim. It's so grim. Yeah. It uh, definitely feels like maybe he was right about 75. That's what you did, I think. You got yeah. that weird sailboat painting from Sears. Yeah. Um, that everyone's parents had. <laughs> Not sailboat, it was, what is it called? A schooner? Yeah. The three mast ship yeah with the little seagulls that are just like one streak of paint my my brother when he got his first place he had a picture uh and it was it was a picture on glass with square pieces of glass of a horse and I, and it was kind of cool in a way although it was sort of cracked and i was like hey where'd you get that and he goes i don't know the last guy who lived here had it <laughs> oh no and it was definitely that place. Like it was an apartment that smelled a little funny. Yep. And that you were like, you know, the smell never is going to get better. You're just going to get used to it. It's deep pile carpet. You're not, yeah, the nicotine's not coming out of it. No, yeah. It will always smell like a teacher's lounge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of mistakes ground into that carpet. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, a couple of paintings from Sears, a big waterbed. 70 for sure. Uh, and also a, such a nice example of a youthful mistake. <laughs> yeah. Something that sounds like it's going to be so great. Yep. And I don't know if you've ever <laughs> even laid down on one, uh, but it's immediately, one. what? Yeah, Mary Jo and I made that mistake early on. We had a waterbed. How long before you realized it was miserable? Oh, you know what the word? So you did you have one? No, I like okay. stayed at somebody's house and they had one one night. And yeah. I was like, oh so no. It was. It's like a lot of things. The first couple nights, you tell yourself it's incredible because you're like, oh, it's so great. And then the worst part about a waterbed over time is, particularly for a fellow like me, because I like Brenda can be very lazy, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> If you're not making your bed every day, there will come a day when the fitted sheet will come off your bed, right? Yeah. Because you've just been lazy and you haven't been making your bed. So you've just kind of been squirreling around and pushing things off. And then you'll wake up more cold than you've ever been in your life because your damn back was on the exposed water bed. And you're like, am I, am I dying? <laughs> I'm actually dying, I feel. And it'll be hard to get off of the thing. <laughs> Yep. And you'll move and you'll realize you're upstairs and somewhere on the like application, they're like, you can't have a water bed. And you're like, what? All right. Well, I just won't tell them. But that's not a good idea because if something does happen, you're so liable. There's a reason they don't want you to have a damn water bed. You know who else side note had a water bed? Who that? Mulder. Scully and Mulder. Mulder had a water bed. <laughs> what? Yep, from the X-Files, he had a waterbed. Huh. What was the reason for that? He was reticent to explain because Scully didn't understand either because he, he it came up as a side note to a story. And she goes, <laughs> wait a minute, why do you have a waterbed? That's not the important part. The important part is this monster. <laughs> it's a pretty funny episode. It was a, a thing in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, certainly in pop culture, where if a, you or a character in a TV show had a waterbed, it was because they had a lot of sex. Yeah. Like, I think Larry from Three's Company had a waterbed. Yeah. And it was like short, it was TV shorthand for uh, this guy fucks a lot. Yeah. And it was never it was, a lady who had one. Yeah. It, it was, was either like he, a, does, he does fuck a lot or he really wants to and he thinks yeah. that's the, the key to getting it. Right, uh, which is definitely a young person dumb thing to think is if I get the thing that that is tangential to the thing, I'll get the thing. Uh, but <laughs> right, I'll get the symbol for fucking, yeah. and then all the fucking will start happening. Because I got the thing, 
when I was very young, like when I was six or seven, I uh, collected a bunch of uh, grass in our neighborhood, put it in a pile and made it square because I wanted a horse. And it didn't occur to me till after I had done that, that that's not how no one's going to just give you a horse because you got hay. <laughs> <laughs> that should be an expression if it's not yeah <laughs> gonna give you a horse just because you got hay yep and uh oh, that's God. not made up i that I, re I really did that it's a very dumb kid <laughs> that's fantastic i feel like every dumb kid all us kids had some version of that i can't think of mine offhand <laughs> but, yeah there was an idea that like oh if i build a this the other thing will happen. The other thing will just happen because somebody will walk by and go, well, he's got the hay. Here, I have this horse. Now, the waterbed, do you think that was Brenda's idea or Eddie's? I bet it's Brenda's. You think so? Because she's lazy, probably spends too much of their money, and that just probably seemed like a good idea. And I'm only saying that because it was Mary Jo's idea. Oh, you know what? I'm looking at the lyrics again. We didn't even get to the interesting part of the waterbed. It's a big waterbed that they bought with the bread right. they had saved for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it an even dumber, youthful mistake to save up that much money for such a terrible bed. Yeah. It's, you know, I think when we were collegiate, uh, the futon was the thing to have. Yeah. Is that still a thing? Uh, I think that is still a thing because it's practical whether or not it's good. Yeah, I think my futon was like $199. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's real mobile if you know that I'm living in this apartment now, but I'm not going to be here long, like especially in college, because in college you know that I'm here while I finish these classes. Right. Hopefully, no point filling up a waterbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you what I did with my futon? I did not. You did. I moved from Tucson to LA. I had a pickup truck. So I put everything I owned in the back of the pickup truck. And to weigh it down so I could drive on the highway, I put my futon on top of it. Very sensible. Yeah. Didn't strap it down, though. <laughs> the futon, if you try to pick it up by yourself, it's awkward. It feels incredibly heavy. So you're like, this is fine. This will not go anywhere. <laughs> and I drove to from Tucson in my pickup truck all the way to LA. I got to like the 101 and it was maybe three in the morning racing along the 101. And I see the futon is doing this in my rear view mirror. I can see the futon <laughs> sort of <laughs> waving. And I'm like, oh, I should pull over because it's gonna, and then it just went shoom and like sailed away <laughs> at like 70 miles an hour and landed in the middle of the 101. And so I had to pull over and wait on the side of the road and like run out, uh, reenact Frogger <laughs> and try to run out and drag it back. And then some guy on a motorcycle ran over it oh. and then turned around and came towards where I was. And I thought, oh, well, he's going to murder me now for almost killing him on his motorcycle. But it was LA, so he took off his helmet and he goes, dude, I thought that was a body. Do you want some help? <laughs> I thought it was a body. Do you want some help in like 30 seconds? And so he and I ran out there and dragged it off the 101 and put it back in my truck and I slept on it for another year. <laughs> and it had a big tire mark down the middle of it. And of course, all the stuffing was discombobulated. So it was very lumpy and bad. <laughs> and I slept on it for another year because, you know, it was like 26, who cares? I barely care what happens to me, yeah. <laughs> especially at that age. I'm like, all right, at least I get to be indoors. <laughs> I didn't have high standards for quality of life. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. So, when I moved to LA, I moved here with Graham and Paul, and all of our furniture was uh, curbside furniture. Yeah. And I slept on a uh, pool floaty. 
<laughs> a pool floaty. Yeah. Not wow. even well, did you have a place for your drink at least? Oh, I, you know what? I Maybe I'll get that back because that actually sounds pretty good. But no, it's just one of those pool, pool that had its own pillow. You know, that kind <laughs> right? of thing. Not and, terrible. Yeah. Probably no, slept it's, better it's, then than now. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. And I was... What I did too is because I was, I didn't have a dresser drawer, so I laid out my clothes flat next to it, and that's how I kept my clothes. They were just in a pile. So this is shirts, this is pants, and you just pick one up and put it on. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was well, look at us now, right? And I was living with Graham and Paul. <laughs> oh yeah, so you didn't have any reason to try harder. No, and that was your the, life was gonna be bad anyway. The worst version of Paul and the worst version of Graham is that era of them. Yeah, he's a mad about everything and just mad. <laughs> Everyone's mad all the Everyone's time. Mad and broke. Yep. Uh, I hey, take this next verse, bud. Oh yeah, you got it. I'm gonna move I, us along a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. This is a long. Song. Oh wait, where are we? Big water bed with the bottom with the bread. They save for a couple of years. Then I'm sorry, I'll do this because this is my favorite part. They started to fight when the money got tight, and they just didn't count on the tears. Is such. Um, it's very Hemingway. It's like yeah. <laughs> this is what happened. I could tell you the same story in a hundred pages. Yeah. But they started to fight when the money got tight and they just didn't count on the tears. Yeah. And then it's funny because you tell us you didn't have any money and then right away they lived for a while in a very nice style. And now we know they don't have money and they're living outside their means. But yep. it's always the same in the end. They got a divorce as a matter of course and they parted the closest of friends. So bitter, so bitter because they, <laughs> if you got divorced and you're still friends, it's because you really did love each other and it just didn't fucking work. Yeah, or you didn't love each other at all. Oh, but you liked each other. But you liked each other. And you liked uh, what happened when you were together because yeah. you were prom king. Yeah, you know, so like, oh, anyway, I loved being prom king and having a prom queen. That's what I loved. So you were in love with the idea of each other, which is a very common thing in lots of relationships. That's true. Um, then the yeah, then the king and the queen went back to the green, but you can never go back there again. Perfect. I, yep. we, we all get it. You uh, you tried to recapture your youth, and you were like, oh, but we're old now. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, everybody's mad at us. Yeah. They told us this wasn't going to work. <laughs> and here we are back, dropping applications everywhere. Yep. In fact, I might even uh, end up working somewhere in the Village Green. Oh, this is going to be dumb. All my friends are going to see me at the place. Eh. Yep. Yep. That happened to me. I, I graduated from the U of A. And uh, I had a couple of dates with this girl that I really liked, and it didn't work out. But then I graduated, and I was delivering pizzas. And I delivered a pizza to her. Yeah. Um, and she was like, I'm a very busy lawyer type or a paralegal or something. And I was like, oh, I'm this. This <laughs> is what I am. <laughs> I'm the guy bringing you a pizza and hoping you will tip me. Uh, did, cool. Did she tip you extra because of sadness? Because that sometimes happens. <laughs> I feel like that might have happened. I probably <laughs> blocked it out. Yeah. But yeah, you don't deliver pizzas after college in the town you went to college. Just go to another town. Yeah, It's worth it. Dude, I had the same thing happen to me. There was a girl I liked in middle school. And then I was doing a cold, I was going to do this cold calling job as a young adult. And this girl that I pined over was also at the cold calling job. And she, <laughs> and she did this thing that Oh, I don't know why some people do this where she was like, are you okay now? And I'm like, are you asking me if I'm over you? We were oh. in middle school. Why are you talking to me this way? And it <laughs> makes me mad when people do that. I'm like, do you think that since middle school, 
all That's I've been doing is thinking about you. <laughs> so I promise you I haven't. And before now, I wasn't even mad at you. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stuff happened to me after middle school. There were other girls, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there are other girls who didn't like me. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to have some of them come here and tell you. No. You're not even the most recent lady who didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't even dislike me the most. Well, I don't. I guess I can't say that. Maybe you do, but I don't think you do. <laughs> uh, do you want me to take this one or do you want to go with the next one? You take it. All right. Brenda and Eddie had had it already by the summer of 75. That did not last wow. long. Wow, they didn't last long at all because they were still going steady in the summer of 75 and they decided the marriage would be at the end of July. Yeah, that, that did yeah. not go well. He's from bad with numbers. From the height of the low to the end of the show for the rest of their lives. They couldn't go back to the greasers. All right, this is they were 18 years too late. <laughs> yeah. years. They couldn't go back to the greasers, yes, because they were like seven. Uh, the best they could do was pick up the pieces. We always knew they would both find a way to get by. Oh, so now you're on our side. <laughs> right. We always believed in you, Eddie. <laughs> oh, that's. Uh oh, uh, can we get some Parmesan? <laughs> now, this part of the lyric, again, I have to say, as far as Billy Joel having a sense of humor about stuff he writes, so we all know Billy Joel has a sense of humor, but man, it comes out really well because this lyric here, I just like. Uh, that's all I heard about Brenda and Eddie. Can't tell you more than I told you already. And here we are waving Brenda and Eddie goodbye. I can't even think of what that reminds me of. It feels very like Andrew's sisters or something. <laughs> yeah. Like Summing up the song, and I'm telling you that I'm summing up the song. Yeah. And aren't I adorable? I can't tell you more because I told you already. Okay. It's that's fantastic, and and um again, economy. Here's the story. I'm done with the story, and now it feels like, hey, listen, I'm sorry to put you out. I'm not the one who asked you to tell me this story. <laughs> I'm just asking for more details. That's all I know. <laughs> You don't have to tell me more. I think it's also he might have been a little self-aware that the Brenda and Eddie part went on too long. Because he did, was very like detailed paintings from Sears. They had a waterbed. It didn't work out. They got divorced as a matter of course, and they parted the closest of friends. And then there's a whole other verse about how that it didn't work out. Yeah. You're like, okay. So I think somebody was like, hey, uh, there's too many Brenda and Eddie verses. And I'm like, ah, I'll fix it. I got a little joke. <laughs> I'll put in a little joke about how long it is. It would be funny to find out oh, if they ever got to ask Billy Joel, this would be a good question. Did you have more stuff about Brenda and Eddie that you cut? Because <laughs> I kind of would enjoy hearing all of it. <laughs> yeah, that. if there's any one part of the song that could have stood on its own, it'd be that. Yeah. And a thing about like Eddie getting his prostate examined. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Uh, Brenda, you know, Brenda started to lose her hair. So that's actually a weave. Did you know that, Did you know <laughs> oh, that about no. Brenda? She was, you know, yeah. pretty, she was in high school. That's a weave. It turned out they lived very close to a super fun site. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so wrap us up. And then what happens musically is. Go. Um, it's a little bit of a, it's awkward. I feel like musically, I don't know a lot about actual music <laughs> to the point where I could describe what happens there, but it does sound like he just like can't find a seamless way to get back to the first song. It just kind of is a bunch of big fat chords. And yeah. then, all right, now I'll just start playing Bottle of Red again. It's uh, listen to it again. It's muddy. Yeah. It's smooth transition. You imagine it's orchestral too at that point too. Yeah. It gets very, it swells. There's a lot of swelling. Yeah. There's instruments we haven't heard before. Yeah. Which I, I do like, but I will re-listen to that because you're right. It just kind of, the, the, 
Brendan Eddie kind of grinds to a halt. <laughs> yeah. We transition into um we're 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 by now, by the way, we're hammered. We're definitely kind of yeah. Uh and now it's a bottle of red, a bottle of white, whatever kind of mood you're in tonight. Yeah. I'll meet you anytime you want. Just a little okay. Just a little desperation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what kind of mood you're in. I'll meet you anytime at our Italian restaurant. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, I always thought of it as not very cohesive, but having gone through the lyrics like we did, I think it is one story. It is the story of meeting at this Italian restaurant with the girl you used to have a crush on, reminiscing generally and then specifically. Yeah. And then being very drunk by the end of your Brenda and Eddie story to the point where you're repeating yourself <laughs> and then saying, look, let's get one more bottle of wine because I will meet you anytime. I don't care what kind of mood you're in. Yeah, you, you're, you're pretty. Really you're great. Good. It's a sad story. Yeah. You know, my place is just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. All right. Let's I got to work tomorrow too, stupid. <laughs> I didn't mean stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess now that I think about it that way, it makes sense that he says bottle of whites. Because at this point, he's like, Where do I need more drinks? <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, the last one. Uh, the first bottle of red, bottle of white verse is very Sinatra y. And this is like swollen old Sinatra. Yeah. It was a little Steve off his Martin? game. Is this a little Steve bit of Martin? <laughs> this is Dean Martin. <laughs> yes. It's a little lounge singer version of what happened the first time around. Yeah. Um, it is absolutely cohesive. You're right. It is. It is uh, one story. Yeah. It's three little song fragments for sure. But it is one story of one night. Yeah. Probably a weeknight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a Tuesday and you should not have been going out. <laughs> yeah. I remember I, I would go out with Elwood to this damn bar, the Friar Talks, which you went to. Sure. And uh, we would go, let and we would say many times, let's go get a beer, we would say. Oh, yeah. That never happened once. Not even yeah. once that we got a beer at Friar Talks. A beer is the greatest lie <laughs> anyone has ever told. Yeah, and Friar Talks, the people who worked there, enjoyed us i guess because we would just be sitting there having our beers and shots would show up yeah and we didn't pay for them so of course i'm like i'm not gonna turn away a free shot of anything it's but, rude yeah <laughs> yeah even the people who work at bars don't have a beer yeah <laughs> mostly super drunk when they leave work <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah this uh is a great fucking song yeah and it is one scene from an italian restaurant frankly yeah i think yeah no i think it's one big one story is being told it's a it's one story and maybe multiple scenes because it's one story and here's our friends having yeah dinner and then here's these you know crazy the guy people. in the story is telling us a story yeah 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 sure. absolutely uh, then, so that yeah it's a story inside it's an inception <laughs> and, it's usually story I, inception. Yeah. and, and this is his longest song oh, okay you have subsequently yeah. found that out and 740 so I, it's not for anybody <laughs> It's certainly not to help him with radio play. No. Um, but, but if you go to like, you're talking about Billy Joel being musical theater for uh, dumb straight kids. This is that for sure. This is, yeah. this is a, a lovely story. Very theatrical. And uh, it's, it's funny because I know Billy Joel thinks of himself or to some degree in his career, he's thought of himself as a rocker and rock and roll guy, but but some of the best stuff that he does, like this, this ain't rock and roll. It's it's a. Uh, I mean, there's rock and roll in there. Indeed. 
and there is crooning. Yeah. For sure. There is theater. Yeah, no, there's a lot happening. Yeah. He's, it's funny because in some ways he's, what's that? Uh, so uh, he's, he's just a storyteller, is what he is. He just, he's just like one of those guys that just like Don McLean or whatever. It's like just telling us story. Yeah. I like him. Like a better Don McLean, because I like Don McLean fine, but I like Billy Joel better. But you know, although all day long, um, Starry Starry Night, if I feel like crying, oh, the best, yeah. I feel like crying, which I often do. I'm like, here, there we go. That's the thing. <laughs> if you really feel like, um, I'll give you a crying song. <clears throat> My favorite is, uh, do you like Loudon Wainwright? Do you know that guy? No. Let me write. Yeah, write that down. I think you might love him. I bet I would. Um, say the name again. Loudon is his first name. Like the uh, Spice guy. Like Lou, Lou, okay. Loudon Wainwright. Yep. All right. Um, there's a song called Thanksgiving. It's a, a good weeper. I'm, not, I'm already bummed out now thinking about things. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be know where it's going. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so let me do this. This is Billy Joel's longest uh, track. So uh, trivia question of the week. What is his shortest song? Okay. By the way, I listened to the Root Beer Rag the other day. I was like, this is great. It's delightful. Yeah. I and it's pure showing off. Yeah, it, it was fun. It's what It's got to be amazing live, live. I watched a live version of it because I think that's the only way you want to watch it because it was like him on some late night show probably like not soul train but one of those dumb shows <laughs> probably not soul train. <laughs> yeah probably maybe not soul train oh, shortest song lord uh, i'm just gonna guess don't ask me why that's not it there's a souvenir oh okay Song called Souvenir that's 201. I'm gonna listen to <laughs> shortest that. track. 201? That's pretty short. Yeah, that's a tiny song. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a little bite size song. You know, yeah. it should be his shortest song. Is it should be entertainer, but it's not. It should be. Because that would be funny if it was, because that's part of what that's <laughs> about. Um entertainer is something like 350 on the album but if you do buy the 45 for radio play it is 305. Perfect. really really made me laugh <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun little fun little yeah thing. all right well that's a good bit of trivia um there, there's my image for the week that's an easy uh -huh. white ball tires that's right are you gonna cruise the miracle mile i'm planning planning on cruising okay. the miracle good luck be careful yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i might listen to some new wave but as far as i'm concerned it's still rock and roll to me oh yeah he got around your <laughs> your observation <laughs> literally said that every kind of music is rock and roll to him yeah and actually that's a that's a pretty good rocker i think yeah musically yeah yeah like the one song where you don't have to make oh, it. I forgot but... to say one of the parts of this. Oh, I thought you were going to say you forgot to hit record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot to say one of the parts of this song that I find so funny. Uh, and let me go back to the lyrics and try to guess where it is. And then. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Where was it? Uh, sweet romantic. Right, right. I think it might be somewhere near my sweet romantic teenage nights. There literally is a part where he goes there. You hear a little horn and he goes, ah, rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, let, let's rock and roll. I find that part really funny because it's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know, yep. they're, like they're so, you would like I go, you wouldn't get, go to a like, smoky bar and somebody would be playing and they'd go jazzy jazz and you're like oh i guess he's playing jazz <laughs> uh that might happen but yeah <laughs> he's 
no, no, nobody ever goes opera unless it's a dumb joke on SNL. Nobody does that. Let's jazz. Let's jazz, everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, it is the coolest name for a musical genre, rock and roll. Yes. And you so know it, what it's, it is a fun thing to yell. And you know what its origins thing. are, right? Yes, I do. What I can't remember the, the guy's name. That I don't remember. I just know it's it was initially dirty, is all I know for sure. Rockin' and rollin' is in fact doing stuff with it. And there was a guy who ran a music show and he coined the term. Yeah, like, oh, this is rock and roll music, as yeah. in this is fucking music. Yeah. And he's the guy who eventually went to jail for tax evasion or payola or something. That guy, right? I think don't know. I, sh I don't want to sully him without knowing for sure. Sid. But probably. Sid Friedman? Nope. That's the psychiatrist from MASH. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alan something? Alan Freed? M maybe. I think maybe Alan Freed. Winchester. It was Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought my research assistant was working on it, but she's doing something else entirely. <laughs> Playing a slot machine video game. Oh, nice. Yeah. Real, real monies? No, which is okay. the great part about it. It's okay. only the boring part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, we're running long, bud. Yeah, so uh, what's our song for next week? Next week? Wait, I think next week I need a hiatus week. Perfect. So uh, episode. It, it is Xmas. Um, I think we'll come back and let's do one he got in trouble for. Good night, Saigon. Oh, great. Awesome. Uh, and uh, happy Hanukkah to anybody who's listening who celebrates Hanukkah and Merry yeah, Christmas. Yeah. And Merry Christmas to, uh, I guess, the rest of them. Yep. And the rest uh, of y'all. Now, i tell you real quick the difference between Hanukkah and Christmas. You want to know the difference? I do want to know the difference. So Hanukkah is a holiday that celebrates, like all Jewish holidays, celebrate. So the oil is incidental as far as I'm concerned. Every Jewish holiday can be boiled down to this truth. At one point, a bunch of people tried to kill all the Jews. They failed. Let's have a mediocre dinner. So that's every <laughs> Jewish holiday. Christmas, on the other hand, is made up. <laughs> great <laughs> oh, i love it all right everybody i hope uh i hope you're ha healthy and happy and uh thank you for listening